excitement brewing here in South Florida as a moment ago the Dolphins starters were introduced to this home crowd there well as they get set to match up with the Indianapolis Colts Now the former Washington Husky, here's Miles Gaskin. He takes this for three to the 29. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. handoff it's Gaskin and not much maybe a yard up to the 29 back-to-back -back runs I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain minimal yardage and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up this defense looking for an early stop this is third down and six tongue of Iloa working out of the gun and oh, that nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall incomplete. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. On fourth down, Michael Pilardi on to punt. Back deep for the Colts, Naheem Hines. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. On first down, Wentz. A good throw here, finding Pascal. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back to back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. Pushing forward for three up to the four. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 43. Well, it's going to give this to Taylor. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line that hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. On second down, it's Taylor. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because, really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. 
Oh, Pascal able to haul that one in. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is starting. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. They'll run here with Taylor. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Again, it'll be Taylor. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. This has not been a fun sequence for him at all. First and goal, no gain. Second and goal, he ends up losing yardage. He may be trying to talk him into getting the ball a third time, but it's going to be difficult for him to win that battle. Wentz now on third and goal. This is caught. And he will be out of bounds here on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. No score after one on EA Sports. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. Try to punch it in with Taylor. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Jonathan Taylor. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Colts' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Now this defense held out as long as they could, but ultimately the running game wears them down from the one-yard line. And that gets set up throughout the entire drive, doesn't it? And when you put those big bodies and determination into that carry, the end result, touchdown. Extra point by Blankenship is up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And here's Jakeem Grant from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And this one complete to Will Fuller. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Here's Gaskin. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Throwing now is Tug of Iloa. Finding Gaskin underneath. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts 43. 
And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Seven yards to pick up there. A play fake for Gaskin. Now Tua. That's caught by his big tight end, Mike Gesicki. And they'll get him to the ground. He has another first down at the Colts' 18. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? And it sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. So not quite a first and goal just yet as they come up now second and inches. On the carry. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That time, the right guard sending him backwards. And so many different types of guys rotate in on the defensive line now, depending on situations. You can get the bulky guy, the fast guy. No matter what, though, you can't hold them. And once again, this Colts defense stops him behind the line of scrimmage. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. He's got long, his tight end complete. And the Dolphins are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Tua sets up to pass it. Eluding the pressure right. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Second and goal from inside the five. Now Tua. to him a sack sack back at the nine yard line DeForest Buckner the defensive tackle getting in there for a loss of five this has been a long drive you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown can they convert now on third and goal and this pass broken up Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. The kick by Sanders is good. And they are on the board but still trailing it's seven to three so they do get the three points before they hit halftime something to build on maybe yeah go ahead and raise the banner right but wave the flag that's good got points and now as you said they've got something to build on as they get ready for the second half
after the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. Here's Isaiah Rogers to return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And with a little under a minute to go, still time to try to put a drive together to add to their lead should they so choose. Wentz's throw taken in by Pascal. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. For the Colts now, they're ready to get the football back. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. Throwing on first is Wentz. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Now the Colts going to burn the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Wentz going to throw. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. And he's going to have a first down here. They're also in a field goal range now at the 27-yard line. My goodness, they've come out locked in on this drive. Play calling, execution, they are fully in sync. Three straight passes, three first downs. They're moving the ball downfield almost at will. This defense really struggling to find answers. Meanwhile, Wentz's throw complete here to Doyle. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. Blankenship's kick is good. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. So a nice kick there as they add three to the lead. And from what I've seen so far, Brandon, I think they've been the better of the two teams here in the first half. So even though you want the touchdown, I think that's a nice job there to put three points on the board. Seconds on the remain here in this first half as the kick gets away. This is Jakeem Grant. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. This taken in at the goal line. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now Wentz. And just his second incompletion so far. He's eight for 10. I think he'll take 80%. There's no doubt that he will, but if you're the defensive play caller, you better circle what you just dialed up on your play sheet and come back to it because you just caused an incompletion. You need a few more of those. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. 
Now wins. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. Shoves him aside. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. Whenever we talk about moving the sticks and controlling the football, there's a great example right there. Those are the third downs you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. On second and nine, Wentz. This is caught by Hilton. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 45-yard line. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. That's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Wentz now on first down. He's got it to Hilton. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Bernardrick McKinney muscled his way in for the sack. But defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. You definitely would like to hit on that one because now you've got a third and long showing up, and you just know defense is going to be getting after it. They are pinning their ears back, and they are coming. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Wins. And that is incomplete. The Dolphins do the job defensively there, and now it brings up fourth. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. Blankenship's kick is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. Jakeem Grant now to return. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Dolphins at the line ready for their next drive. 
And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half, and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That throw complete to his tight end long. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. I'm getting the sense that this offense is getting frustrated. Here we are into the third quarter. And they've had plenty of opportunities to get in sync. Thus far, that hasn't happened. They're looking for answers both on the sidelines and in the huddle looking at each other. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Wentz now on first down. That's into the hands of Pascal. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Here's a second and five now from the 25. To throw, it's Wentz. Finding Hilton on the slant. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Third quarter from Miami. This is second and ten. Now wins. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. Solid move, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Wentz now to throw. Complete to Hilton. And he is going to have a Colts first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. And that's going to do it. Clock hits zeros. They're not going to get another playoff. Time has run out on this third quarter. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. It's Taylor, and he gets it down to the 32. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. 
Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. On first and 10, here's Wentz. And the catch made by Hilton. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Throwing now is Wentz. Steps away to his left. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. So there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big time situation in the fourth quarter. Picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? Ivan, make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. A nice pickup of six there to get him closer to the end zone, and it'll be second and goal. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. Vince Beagle, the blitz works to perfection as he gets in there to dump him for a loss of eight. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. To throw his wins. Well, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Disastrous outcome there on third and goal. They lose nine yards on the sack. And it appears to me that someone's defensive coordinator is jockeying for a raise. A sack on second and goal, a sack on third and goal. Now brings up a decision on fourth down. Blankenship's kick is good. And the lead stretches, 16 to three now. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but they still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Grant, he will not return it, and his guys will begin at the 25. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked go to so well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Two and now on first down. Over the middle, he's got Gasicki, the big 6'5 tight end. And he'll get this forward only for about a yard, as that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. A good rally to the football keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Tua able to connect with Fuller. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First 
down now, but the clock continues to move. Now Tua. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by Corey Willis. And the Colts are going to get the football here at their own 40-yard line. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. Now the timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. Defense, they'll spread the field, a dime package here on third and 12. Wentz with a kneel down, and that will be the final act of this game. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. So this one winds up in Indianapolis victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last points of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in.